Good day, fellow pruners. It's the end of winter, perfect time to prune, and you want to go prune your apple tree. I want to give you seven things not to do when pruning your apple tree. The first one, and common piece of advice, is to make heading cuts. Heading cuts? What's a heading cut? Well, imagine, how would you like to have your head cut off? No, but a branch, it's the same thing. You have a branch. Oh, cut it to above a bud. Well, at least that's correct. You should cut it to above a bud, but you shouldn't cut it to start with. Why are you cutting it? Ask yourself. Yes, the idea is it will send out more branches below. That's true. They don't tell you, and you may have seen this in videos or in books, they don't tell you the consequences of doing that. So what happens if you prune a branch at the tip? Well, the most important and one that I'm fanatical about is how dangerous it becomes. A branch tip is a little dangerous, but at least there's a bud to absorb. But once you cut it, and especially if you cut it at an angle, you've now got almost a nail. You know how dangerous that is? I can tell you because twice I got it right on the edge of the face, on the edge of the eye, almost lost my eye. And that's why I do not ever suggest you head back a branch. One reason why. Another one is when you cut a branch, you stiffen it. Why? Because now that branch can't do what it normally does, which is bear fruit and bend over. You see a lot of these branches? Look at this one. See, it, it was like this last year. It had some fruit and it starts to bend over naturally. Why are you pruning it if you prevent it? Do you want a branch sticking up in the air? Go see my last video on suckers, how they're an indicator of. That's good enough reason why not to do that. How do you do then? What do you do with it? Just leave the branch evolve naturally. The branch should bend down. Look at these. It should bend down as it was a branch probably up and with loads of fruit, it comes down. So that's what a branch wants to do. You know what? We often think, if I prune it, I'm going to do it, make it do what I want to do. That's a little ignorant or arrogant. We're not the master of the tree. The tree knows what to do. Do you think it's the first time that tree has faced some sort of pruning? What's pruning naturally? Pruning by deer, pruning by rodents, pruning by storms. These are all ways that branches naturally get some pruning. So the tree is used to responding to that. There's no problem here. There's no suckers. These branches are meant to naturally come down. Don't mess with them to stiffen them up and keep them from doing that. That's the biggest misinformation I see. The second bit of misinformation, it's not the best bit of information, it's to make flush cuts. You don't want to make flush cuts. You want to respect and keep as much or all, in fact, all of this branch collar. What is it? It cells waiting to close up the hole or the cut or the tear if it's a storm that broke it off. When in doubt, if you're not sure, you cut it longer. You don't leave a stub that long, please. Leave it a little longer. In this case, I left it a little longer. See what happens? Here's the branch collar coming back to heal the cut. I can come back and just shave that little bit off. But what that means is there is absolutely none of the branch collar that was cut off. And that's exactly what you want because if you cut too far, you take away that branch collar and you're gonna have a hole for a long time. I say that because I killed a bunch of trees and I destroyed a bunch that are still there but they've got huge gaping holes because I took away the collar it could never heal over and now I've got these trees with big cavities. It's great if you want to get squirrels and birds to use your apple tree but listen there's enough other trees don't make them use your apple trees. Avoid making flush cuts. Follow the branch collar angle and that's simply cut Add a 90 degree to the branch. It always shows you where to make that cut. Don't cut flush. It's pretty simple. Look at the branch. It's showing you where to cut. One often given advice is you want to cut and prune the tree to shape it. 
When in doubt, look at what nature's doing. Does nature shape a tree by cutting? You say, well, no. Then how does the tree in the end, if nobody's touched it, how does it get shaped? It gets shaped by the fruit. You gotta understand, a branch starts off much higher, an angle that's much straighter. See, here's one. Okay, it's going straight. I haven't pruned this to shape it. Why? Because I understand that once here, here, you start getting some fruit buds, give a little bit of weight on this branch and it will naturally come down. Give it more, more fruiting buds, more fruit, and it will come down. And eventually you'll have a branch that's down horizontal. You'll have a branch like that. Why? Because it's the fruit that have shaped it. Don't use your secateurs to shape. My mentor, Dr. Lespinas, he would, his favorite saying was, serrez vos secateurs. These are secateurs. Serrez means put away. So if you want to translate, it says, put away your pruners. Why? We weren't here to prune. Put them away. Let the tree shape happen by itself. Or if you have to, you can take a branch. This isn't the perfect time of year. It's really summertime when there's a lot of sap in the branch. But you can take this branch and simply place it underneath another. Or I use training wires that I'll attach to the trunk and train a branch down. And now I've shaped or trained that branch instead of pruning it. Because what did I say before, earlier? If you prune it, you stiffen it. Well, how easy will it be for that branch to naturally now go down with the weight of fruit? It won't, it won't go down with the weight of fruit. It'll stay and you'll have a tree with branches like this. And he would also say, do you want a tree or do you want fruit? And that change was saying, if your tree has mostly branches going up like this, this is the trunk, and trees respond a lot like us, a central trunk and branches and limbs. So he said, do you want a tree? And if your branch is up in the air, you're gonna get a tree. It will grow branches and that's what you'll get. Or do you want fruit? And fruit means your branches now are below horizontal. Go see last branch angle video. If you let that branch naturally evolve, naturally progress from up, down, 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 it will do that if you don't mess with the branch. Don't start pruning. Don't tip. Don't cut. Don't shape. Let the branch evolve. Now I understand sometimes people say, well, you know, the branch is out in the way. Okay, if it's in the way, maybe you didn't give it enough place, you put it too tight, and that's possible. If that's the case, don't tip a branch, go. You say, well, this branch is in the way. It's not, but I'll just show you. Don't mess with it here. Take the whole branch off. Lean it against the next big branch and cut it off there. Or if it's really in the way, if it came from here, cut it off right at the trunk. Don't start messing with the tips of the branches. Another one Dr. Lespinas used to tell us was, don't mess with the integrity of the branch. You see, he would say, it's like your body. Imagine your arm is a branch and you've got fingers. Your tree should naturally have a hand at the end. It should have several branches. You say, but then it looks crowded. It looks like, listen, are you imposing a view on the tree? And that's fine, you can but you're always gonna be fighting that branch. You're always gonna be fighting that tree because the branch is trying to return to a semblance of something normal. So be careful with pruning to shape a tree. Train it instead. Another bit of advice is to cut inward facing branches. The more you cut, the more you create inward facing branches. And this is a good example. This branch here, it's right in my aisle and yeah you know what I shouldn't have cut it back cut it back cut it back cut it back I should have cut it back all the way here some years ago I've left it and I've cut it and I've tried to accommodate passing by but you know what 
it has created branches that are inward facing. Why? Because I intervened. The tree knows better than to grow towards the trunk. Towards the trunk is usually the most shady place. So the tree naturally will grow outwards towards the light. But if you intervene, you will get them. Now, do you have to cut them because it says that? Or they, they'll tell you to do that? Well, again, you see this branch, it's getting some light. It's going to fruit. And it's up here. It's almost at the trunk. If I prune it, I, I can. I can cut it off here. I can train it. I can just place it so that now it will it will have more fruit, it will grow down. And if it is allowed to grow down, is it still inward facing? Not really. And that's nice, that's low to pick the fruit. Does it mean every branch you have to prune? No. It means you should let it go and put away your pruners a lot of the times. Inward facing, we create. One bit of advice is to shape your tree to have multi branches let's say three branches to start oh i cringe why because if you want it to grow on a natural form the way apple trees want to grow in a central trunk a one liter if you leave more branches with an upward shape you're not going to get three branches you're going to get three trunks Understand the distinction. If you leave three branches at the top that are going up, each one should be considered another trunk because that's what they're gonna try to do. They're gonna go, and like this one here, it goes up and now it's starting to go straight up. This one, it goes up and it's going straight up. The same with the one back here. They're gonna try to become tops. In a case like this, you're probably better off to actually train the tree or prune it to be three trees in one. And that's really the simplest way to keep a tree that's got three without going crazy over it. So be careful. Always try to use one trunk. It just simplifies keeping a tree. If your tree's younger, three trunks is not the way to go. Hey, just to make you feel comfortable, this is a tree that's have one of my most neglected trees. I don't think I've pruned this in 10 years really. I've let it go. We have an electric wire over it. You know what? The tree eventually takes a sown shape but if you're gonna start pruning continue pruning. If you've never touched a tree and it was small and you've never touched it it will take on a natural form which works for that tree cultivar. Another piece of advice is to Cut the leader, cut the central leader. <sighs> How would you like to have your central leader cut off? Not really. Well, the tree doesn't either. The tree will usually tell you if it's done growing. Apple trees are all grafted, grafted on different root stocks that give you a different size tree. If you try to keep a tree abnormally low for what it could be, it will send out suckers. If you top it too early, it will send out suckers. But if you leave it, or even better, if you bend the top, you'll get an arcing top. You could see by the top there is no suckers here because the tree says, That's, I'm, I'm good with that, I'm fine. That's the height it will be. If you top it, another thing that will happen is that you're going to delay that tree from fruiting. Got to look at pruning as a gas pedal and a brake. It's kind of like that. If you want the tree to be full gas, prune away because that tree will think it's being eaten by some rodent, some deer, and it will send out new growth at the expense of fruiting. The brake is fruit. So the quicker your tree will begin to fruit, the smaller it will be. The more you prune, the more it will grow. It doesn't at first seem to make sense, but it's really what the tree will do. Don't mess with it early and it will give you a shorter tree fruit sooner. Isn't that what you really want? We put together a whole course on pruning. Go see pruningcourse.com. Check out the first video, it gives you a three-step approach to pruning apple trees that really is 
modern information, not outdated information, not what the books show, because a lot of the books actually have information that's not based on the current research or good data. It's just based on what people have done. But if you want to prune, and it comes down to what's your goal? What do you want to prune for? Why are you pruning? Is it for entertainment, for the exercise, for the activity, for the chance to be outside? Then go ahead and prune away. But if you want a tree that's productive, produces earlier, produces a smaller tree, then get the course. Keep your tree smaller by letting it be fruitful instead of pruning it that way. So much information in there. Check it out, pruningcourse.com. Hope this helped. Prune away? No. These, what's it called now?